Uh, during the first 15 minutes, I will share some slides with you and we will delve a little bit into mythology and history. And then I will go back to the camera and share some personal practical tips on, on tree magic. Uh, so since we have so little time, let's just, let's just get to it. I'm gonna share screen. Um, so let's start then and let's focus on the, on the tree of life. You have probably all heard of the tree of life already uh, because it's a, it's a rather known reoccurring symbol in, in various ancient arts, mythologies, but also many philosophies and religions all around the world. Uh, there's also the world tree, which is sometimes confused with the tree of life, and which basically encompasses the idea that our world is multidimensional and that it has all these different worlds and realms. Uh, and then there's also the cosmic tree, which brings the world tree into a more holistic cosmic sense. And there's also the tree of light or tree of knowledge, but since they all arose from the same idea and uh, this concept of multidimensional existence and of being um, uh, basically source of life, uh, I like to personally call it the world tree of life because that's what it is. <laughs> so let's just call it that uh, from now on. And let's have a look at a few examples from the from ancient arts. Here we can see the world tree of life in Mesopotamian arts uh, with the Mesopotamian gods. And here we can see some examples of the Phoenician uh, art. And there are these two figures with the tree of life that um, kind of recall the biblical tree of life and Adam and Eve. And here we can see another example of the world tree of life with these winged Mesopotamian gods. And here we can see the world tree of life as the world pillar, which I will explain later also. And this is from uh, ancient Greek coin. And here we can see the biblical tree of knowledge or the tree of life um, with Adam and Eve. This is an old um, medieval from medieval Bible. And now we get to uh, a more um, holistic approach of the world tree. The, the world tree or the world tree of life is this, like I said, multidimensional complex of various realms and worlds. And ever since ancient times, uh, trees have been known to hide secret entrances into otherworldly dimensions. And the branches usually led to the future or the ce celestial realms, while the roots um, uh, could take us into the past or into the inner earth realms. And modern day druids and shamans still journey through trees in order to achieve uh, an astral travel or astral projection. Um, and they usually describe it as climbing or descending a tree whose trunk is the channel between the various worlds and dimensions. And this channel has also been called the axis mundi or the world pillar. And it has sometimes been symbolized by a ladder or stairway, but it's basically a channel uh, that refers to multidimensional travel and also this channel of light that refers to the near death experience during which people describe traveling through some kind of a tunnel or channel of light. And here we can see the various depictions of the, uh, the world tree. Uh, here is the world tree as the pillar of heaven, the Irminsul. Here is the, the pillar of heaven of uh, Egyptian arts or Egyptian mythology, the Jet pillar. And here we see the world tree of life on a ship. So it kind of gives the impression of the channel that takes us to the other realms. And this is from Bronze Age uh, Europe. And here we can see uh, the ladder uh, uh, from, this is from uh, the Morgan Bible, 13th century uh, Bible. And we can see the angels ascending and descending on this heavenly ladder into the higher realms. 
uh, it's also stairway to heaven sometimes in these uh, younger uh, younger tradi uh, traditions. And now we go um, to like a more, let's say novel approach to the world tree of life concept. Because in many ways, uh, we could compare the world tree of life to the ele electromagnetic field, which as we know, protects and preserves um, the planet and all the living organisms on it. And our hearts also have this electromagnetic field, as we can see here. Uh, it arises from the center uh, and from the center of the heart and it creates a flow of opposing yet unifying forces that result in our own living energy field. And in 3D, you would see it better how the flow, you know, connects from within outward and how it connects the above and below through the central vortex, or here you can see better the vortex of energy. And this, this vortex kind of embraces, um, embraces us in this beautiful, uh, vibrant and vital energy field. And we could say this encapsulates the hermetic as above, so below, or the as within, so without, which is quite interesting. And um, the electromagnetic field is toroidal in shape. Here we can see the torus. It has a shape of a torus, uh, which looks kind of like a donut, donut shape. But in geometry, uh, the torus is the most harmonious shape. It has this amazing self-organizing quality. And when we look at it in 3D or in motion, we see uh, that it has this ever flowing quality that, that flows from within outward in this constant uh, flow of beautiful uh, energy. And it's completely you know, self-sustaining energy, self-sustaining complex. And here we can see how the Taurus uh, refers to the world tree of life, where, where um, you know, the vortex is the trunk and this constant flow of the two opposing energy creates this unity of branches and roots. So it, it may not be a coincidence that the Celtic tree of life, where the branches and roots entwine, uh, bears a resemblance to the Taurus, as you can see here and therefore also the electromagnetic field of the earth and of our hearts. So here you can also see the torus from above that it has this kind of a donut, donut shape to it. And we could say that symbolically the electromagnetic field of the earth is the world tree of life, whereas um, our own electromagnetic field is our personal tree of life. And we all have this toroidal shape of energy field that flows around us from within outward and back within. And it is truly our source of self-sustaining, uh, self-renewing and constantly um, self-rejuvenating quality. So if you think about it, it could be our source of healing and protection from uh, the artificial electromagnetic fields which we are faced with in our modern society and that are harmful to our space and to us. So that is something that could be explored deeply um, and I hope to do that more in the future. Um, these are really just bits and pieces about the world tree of life and our own uh, tree of life. If you're interested to read more about this, check out my book, Tree Magic because there's so much more to learn when it comes to this amazing connection between the tree of life and the natural electromagnetic field. Again, I'm not talking about the harmful electromagnetic field that is produced by, by our modern technology. And now let's go into the more practical side of tree magic. Uh, there are various ways to approach tree magic. Um, some are more symbolic and metaphysical ones, while others are more earth-based. We will get to those later. Uh, the metaphysical ones would include the shamanic tree journeying, which we brushed over earlier and which I discuss more in my book. But the symbolic ones include working with symbols that represent trees, 
such as the Celtic Oum or the Norse runes. And here you can see them. You can see the Oum, the Celtic uh, alphabet, and, and the runes, which is the Norse alphabet. And while the Oum relates to different types of magical trees from the Druidic traditions, here you can see that each Oum represents a different letter of the alphabet, but also a different magical tree. And I describe these trees again in more detail in my book. So if you're curious, check it out and you will learn more about it. Uh, and the runes, uh, they relate more to the concept of the world tree of life, because they are the sacred alphabet that is used by the three fates or three norns that set the destinies of men at the roots of the Norse world tree called Yggdrasil. And they are also the magical symbols and alphabet uh, because they are both a magical alphabet and magical symbols um, that were brought to us and to other gods by god Odin after his shamanic journey to the roots of the world tree. So they are more connected to the concept of the, the world tree and the multidimensional complex of, of of uh, these different realities. And here we can also see some uh, basic symbols that have been found all over the world since the Paleolithic period and that represent uh, the world tree of life. They're usually crosses um, that um, can be in, encircled or the six pointed stars or the eight pointed star. It's, uh, it was either depicted like this, the kind of cross and star symbols, or they were like these spiked wheels enclosed in a circle. And here you can see that many Norse runes also relate to the world tree of life symbols. These are all really ancient symbols that, that have been found all over, uh, but they, they also connect um, to the Norse runes. And all these symbols are very profound and I recommend learning more about them individually. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time for that now, but let me just mention that many of these symbols are highly protective and they help us tune into our own tree of life, therefore our electromagnetic field, and they can promote um, emotional healing, they can promote easier manifestation, and they also work as psychic shields of protection. I will host more classes on the symbols and runes in the future. So if you are on my mailing list, um, I will let you know uh, and we can discuss it further. And now uh, let's get to the more earthy approach to tree magic, which is working with trees themselves. Uh, the idea of trees being spirited is really old. It's old as humanity itself. And many ancient cultures believed that trees have spirits and oftentimes uh, powerful deities occupied trees as well. For example, the Egyptian uh, god Osiris or goddess Hathor or Greek Athena or Sumerian Enki, these are all deities tied to, to tree uh, symbolism or living. They were depicted as living, literally living in trees. And some deities also found enlightenment by trees, such as the already mentioned Norse god Odin or uh, Buddha who, who reached enlightenment under the famous Bodhi tree. Uh, but all trees have spirits and it, it all depends on how conscious they are in our world because uh, some prefer to live in other realms and they only kind of govern the tree in this realm, so to speak. Um, it's because this realm is not very appealing to nature spirits and fairy folk, uh, especially since, you know, nature has become so polluted and disrespected by humankind. Um, still, there are different uh, ways to work with trees, um, but the core is really um, to approach them with respect and the knowledge that they are living beings just like you and I, and they do have a spirit, um, even though that spirit may not be as attached to the tree body as we are attached to our, um, our bodies. And here we can just see again some examples of the deities and the trees. Here we can see Goddess Hathor in tree. Um, this is uh, ancient Egyptian 
uh, artwork. And here we can see goddess Athena with her tree. And this is just a picture of Mother Earth from an old Italian illustration from 11th century. So this is a really um, rich and old tradition of deities or beings being connected to trees. And here you can see my book. So before I proceed, um, I just wanted to sh share it with you because if you're more, if you if you are interested to delve more into these things that I just brushed over, um, there is um, there is much more to explore here. And now I will share some um, some crucial methods and my favorite methods uh, of tree magic. So I will go back to the camera. I hope. <laughs> And um, yeah, um, the first one that I would like to share is um, to find your own tree spirit guide or tree friend, uh, which is basically the most important thing for those of you who like to go for walks into nature or into forests and parks. And I'm sure that some of you already encountered a tree that you felt some uh, connection to. And it's like meeting a, a friend, a human friend. You want to approach the tree the same way. Um, and it's, it's interesting that usually, like, if you find a tree that you like, you will feel the energy, you know, if, it's, if, if there's this pull, if it likes you back or not. Again, it's just like meeting a person, like you either resonate with that person or not. And uh, what I find interesting is also that some trees especially the trees that are in the wild, um, they don't, um, they are not as open to humans as, um, as we may expect. So if you want to find your tree spirit guide or your tree friend, it's better to go to trees that are more accustomed to human societies or human company, because the trees in the wild may be quite, um, sometimes even angry at humans for how we treat nature and how we treat plants and trees in general. I had this experience when uh, a tree literally kicked me out of the forest um, before it got to know me better. And I had this big branch fall right next to me when I tried to meditate by the tree. And I took it as a clear sign, like I wasn't welcome there. And I later learned why, because this forest experiences people um, that go there only for logging or they go there hunting and there's not this like you know give and receive beautiful harmony of give and receive they only take so they were very close to humans and then when i got to know the trees better and the forest better and i started to um, show respect and admiration then they became more open with me but it's really easier to make a tree spirit guide uh, with a tree that was that is accustomed to humans or maybe that was even planted by a human. Um, here in, in Europe, we have, uh, especially in the old villages, we have trees that were planted for the purpose of, you know, people gathering around the tree or, uh, you know, admiring a tree. So these trees are these trees, these kind of trees, are really uh, friendly to people usually. They like people. But if you find the tree that resonates with you and you think that could be your tree spirit guide, then I advise you to approach it carefully at first to just see like how the energy is. Uh, not all trees like it if you immediately go to them and hug them and, you know, show them too much uh, <laughs> attention. Uh, even though some might, you know, it's just like with people again, like each tree has a different character, different spirit. So some may like it that you just hug them immediately, you make friends immediately, but others, they like this like kind of careful approach. And if you find this tree, then it's good to start the, the relationship by um, um, just spending some time by the tree. You may want to read by it or meditate by it, or just, you know, maybe mentally make some mental connection and uh, just share some impressions or some ideas with the tree and you will see how it reacts. And when you feel like the tree spirit reacts to you, you may ask, start this kind of a conversation usually in your mind um, and you will see what you receive. At first, before the tree knows you, 
it's better to ask um, general questions, maybe about the tree spirits or, you know, approach the tree as this kind of a tree library that knows a lot about the other worlds of the, of the fairy folk or the other, you know, the natural realms. And then when you get to know each other better, you can ask more personal questions and the tree will really become your friend and spirit guide. And if the spirit likes you, the more it likes you, the more it will provide you with answers to your questions. And these answers may kind, come through your, uh, you know, intuitive communication, through your mind, telepathy, or it can give you different signs through the vicinity of the tree. Maybe it gives you certain symbols or runes uh, or, um, different kinds of messages, synchronicities, or the elementals start working with the tree. Maybe you, you feel that when you come to it, there's more wind all of a sudden, or something happens that makes you feel like the tree is in communication with you, in contact with you. And um, then when you, you know, start this friendship uh, with the tree, uh, it's good to show some appreciation from time to time. Uh, so maybe bring it some present, like a little stone, a little, a little uh, crystal, or um, the fairy folk beings in general like sweets, so maybe some sweets, just, just not with chocolate, you know, in case some animals or dogs go around, because that could be toxic to the uh, animals. But maybe some sweets, or they also like uh, some sweet ale or wine, so if you like put a few drops of wine by the roots, or any kind of appreciation of the tree is welcome from the tree spirit guide. And then, you know, your relationship with it will thrive. And it's also, it's, it's important to mention, especially in those, these um, hard times when we maybe cannot go outside so much, is that once you make this connection with the tree, uh, you can visit the tree in your mind in meditation. You don't have to physically be by the tree because once you make the spirit connection, then the tree is there for you in other uh, ways in your inner world. And you can also, usually your spirit guide tree is the tree uh, to go to when you do tree churning, shamanic tree churning, which again, I describe more in my book. I cannot get into that because that's, rather complicated. I cannot get into that now, but it's really the, the basic, you know, and then for the second part of this class, we will learn about the magic tree stuff. Uh, it's the best to get your magic tree stuff from your uh, tree spirit guide or your tree friend. Um, yeah, and so the other, the other part of the practical tree magic I would like to share is uh, that you can also have your own tree guardian. Uh, which is a bit similar to the tree spirit guide, but it's just a different agreement that you make with the tree. And the tree guardian should be in your vicinity so that you can ask it to protect your home and protect your space. If you live uh, in a house with a garden, it's quite easy because you can choose some tree in your garden or you can actually plant a tree with this intention that it's going to be your guardian tree. But if you don't um, live um, in a house with a garden, you can also consider growing uh, a little guardian bonsai tree um, at, at, at your home. Or you can also choose a tree somewhere in your neighborhood that, is, that you can see from your home or that you feel like you're close to it. Uh, and it's important with the tree guardian to look out for like uh, healthy, uh, mighty looking trees that really gives you the impression that they could guard you, they could protect you. And um, it's, it's essential to make a kind of agreement that you guard the tree back. Again, this, you know, harmonious give and receive pattern is really important. So maybe you protect the tree back um, when somebody is intentionally harming it, you can stand up for it. Or when you see that the tree has a wound, you can apply some wax or some sealer, you know, for tree, tree barks. Or if, um, if there's maybe too much uh, drought, you can uh, bring it some water. If it's a young tree, it's especially helpful. Or if you do energy work, you can send it healing or you can send it protection prayers. Just 
you know, so the tree knows that you are there for it as well, and then you will become this you will become this um, you will become friends and uh, you will share the protection. So you protect the tree, and the tree becomes your uh, protector and your shield. And trees are really wonderful shields, especially like when it comes to the harmful electromagnetic uh, energy fields of, of modern technology. Like even 5G, it's interesting that, you know, they have to cut down trees uh, for the 5G towers because trees just block these effects of 5G. So they're really powerful shields. And, um, running out of time so i will have to take a break half an hour break and then we will get back to the uh, magic stuffs but i i'm happy that i could at least share these few uh, these few uh, practical tips with you